Hello, it's Melinda from Scrapbooking and Craft, just coming on with a mission inspiration. This is November's mission for 2016. A little behind getting these done. November and December were a busy month. Um, so I just showed you at the start that this is my wine book I'm working in, which is my altered book. So I've glued a couple of pages together and then removed every second page to give it a bit of wiggle room as well. I'm going to do an update on my altered book and the pros and cons and different things I've learnt by using them this year in the upcoming video. So the first step, Mission Inspiration is a 10 step process done by Mike Deacon, I'll link the Facebook group below. And I've just made some notes off his um, list. So the first one was Paper Lattice. I think it was Cover Your Page with Paper Lattice or Add Paper Lattice. So I had some old brown paper that I usually use as drop paper. So I decided to um, cut that into really thin strips and these strips are only probably three to four millimeters thick so they're quite thin. I actually didn't mind I hand cut them so I didn't mind that they were all crooked and that because I wanted my lattice to look not so perfect and sort of old and rickety and almost falling apart. So I sped this video up I think the lattice bit I actually think I sped it up four or five times quick because you don't really want to sit here and watch me glue paper down. Um, the first thing I also showed you in the video is actually just the page. I just had the page before I started um, because I didn't really want it to take too long to dry. So just using Montmark Gesso which is a gesso you can pick up in Australian cheapy stores for about $10, $12 a tub. It's a fairly big tub and it will last for ages and it's a really good gesso. I don't tend to buy my gesso or texture paste in art and craft stores or scrapbook stores because it's just too expensive and you get like a small bit for not much money but the Montmark is like a student grade um, student grade range and they have canvases, they have books, they have all sorts of stuff, gessos and paints and stuff. Um, so I nearly finished with this, I'm actually adhering the strips down with Mod Podge. Um, I'm actually trying to use up this Mod Podge because it is, says matte but it has a bit of a gloss on it and I don't particularly like it because it sticks my pages together. Um, and I just need to seal them with some clear shoe polish or some beeswax um, when I'm finished. So nearly done. I don't mind that it's crooked, some of the strips are bigger than others. That was sort of the look I was going for, of a more of a rustic look for this, for this page. We nearly finished this. I sped up as much as I could. So I enjoy doing mission inspiration. You can use the hints or the um, the prompts. You can take them as literally or not as literally as you like. They're open to interpretation. If it says use a certain medium or a certain product you don't own, just substitute it for something you have or as close to, or just change it to something different. It's about doing an art journal page, not about going out and spending a fortune to get different things. But most of the prompts are general that you can sort of, any basic stash you can acquire and do that with. So I was just showing you the Mod Podge there, I was unsure whether I showed you that at the start. So just giving that a good dry in between, um, in between the layers, as it's a 10 step process, it's like 10 layers to your page, and you can choose for the layers how much you put on the page. For example, that I covered the whole page with, but in several steps later, I don't cover the whole page or I just add a tiny little bit. So just showing you the Montmark gesso again. So step two was white gesso or paint. So for example, if you don't have white gesso, gesso, if you haven't used it before, is basically an undercoat. Like if you're painting a house, your gesso is your first undercoat and then your good paint or your top colour doesn't actually soak in that well. You can also use gesso to... Um, push some of the darker coloured background papers into the background like this is actually lightening up the brown paper which is really good but you can use white paint, white paint will do exactly the same thing I just used gesso this time because I was putting it over the Mod Podge I wanted the paper to have a bit more tooth and a bit more grab for the next few steps and gesso also gives your artwork or your paper some what we call tooth which is actually makes other mediums stick, um, stick to the page a lot better and it also seals your page as well and you can do some really cool techniques um, that you can't achieve on raw paper but you do need to have a gesso surface. So giving that a dry once again and moving on to step three. Step three is actually 
I'll talk a bit about that while I'm drying off the page. So you want to make sure your gesso is totally dry, and you'll probably see me stick my hand on the page in a minute um, to test whether it's dry, and then there's little bits that's not dry. So you want it to be totally dry because if you go and put paint on top of it, your paint will actually be mixed in with the white gesso and then it will dull your paint colours down. So step three is actually make marks with warm tonal colours. So warm tonal colours, um, November in America and England, I think they're, they're in the same season. So it would be autumn, I'm guessing, because it's the opposite of us would be awesome, before, uh, awesome, I'm sorry, would be autumn before they come into winter. So you can see me stick my finger on there. Bang! There's my paints. Um, so I decided to make some marks with some tubes. What you can see me flipping through at the moment is actually a collection of junk mail that I've just basically stitched together in um, a couple of signatures. And I use that as a paint palette. I use that to put extra paint on and you can see my top of my paint just goes bloop so these are just cheap acrylic paints that I've picked up I'm trying to use up a lot of older paints and older things this year I've got a bit of cardboard there and I've got a cup I've got a tube of um, tube that come off some stickers I think and a top of a glue stick so just making some circles and marks Predominantly up the top part of the page because I do know I'm going to stick something on the bottom part of the page soon, which is the next step. Using the putting the paint directly on the paper, um, on my my junk mail paper, means I don't waste anything. Um, and when I'm finished, if I have any paint left over, I'm just adding layers to the book. And when the page is sort of completed, I can then use it for. Um, punch shapes out of, I can tear shapes out of it, I can die cut it, then I have some pretty painted papers. I've got a video coming up showing you how to make that book. And I could even leave the book as it is and turn it into a mini book with different signatures, um, different pages. I may do that, I may pull it apart, I don't know yet. I may gift some of the papers out um, in Happy Mail. I'm not sure what I'm going to do with it yet. But I'm just using that as a palette to hold my paints and doing that. Sort of went with the yellow brown sort of tonings because that's going to tone in with the next thing that I do for the page. I don't mind how half some of the circles are half stamped, they're sort of darker on one side or lighter on the other side, that sort of adds to the handmade effect. It's nice to have that effect. And this page is very textural as well. You run your hand across the page, you can feel the paper lattice underneath, then you can feel the chunky bits of paint on the circles and the marks that I've made, and then you can feel the other parts. There we go, I'm just spreading out the paint as I'm finished, just to cover the page so nothing's wasted. So I encourage you to either put a collection of papers together or have some dedicated paper that you do put your excess paint on, even excess stamps um, when you've got stamped images um, or when you're stamping, sometimes the second stamp or the third stamp I will actually stamp onto that book um, on some of the pages just to clean up, clean up the stamp as well. Or I will test sprays or I'll test paint colours in that book as well. Um, so that's becoming a real asset on my table. It's just somewhere I can stick excess paint. So just giving that a good old dry because the paint was a bit chunky in places. It did take a few more minutes to dry than others. So just drying it with a heat gun, which is it looks does look like a bit of a hair dryer, but it's actually it puts out heat but not air. So that's very handy for um, art journaling. If you don't have a heat gun, you could use hair dry you could use you can just leave it dry naturally and it dry in a little bit of time sorry I have some music hang on whoops I don't know what that little bit of video was with the music so I think I'll go and take that lower bit out <laughs> so the next step actually step four was collage from nature so I've actually decided to use some napkins I tend to buy a lot of napkins if I'm not using them. They're very pretty and I can't walk past a pretty one I don't have without picking up a packet. I'm terrible. 
so this one I've actually sat and fussy cut out um, the flowers and mod podging it onto the bottom. So the best way if you've never adhered a napkin down to your page, best way to do it is with a mod podge or a PVA or a liquid glue. You basically put a layer of glue at where you're going to put the napkin on your page. You put the napkin on top and then you put a layer of glue on top sealing the napkin. And when you get a paper napkin, it sometimes it's a three ply napkin or a two ply napkin. You do need to remove the white plies from the back of the napkin before you use it. Otherwise it becomes too bulky on your page and your top layer will actually fall off. So the napkins are quite translucent when you stick them down. So you can see some of the um, darker colours showing through and the darker lattice showing through as well. So I cut them in several pieces and rearrange it just to give a collection of flowers down the bottom sort of third of the third to half of the page. So you see how that one that one actually come off the side of a napkin so see how it's got um, like a hard edge and what I've done is just layered the next one over the top just to um, cover up that hard straight edge. Usually I'll line those up against the edge of the page but I decided to actually um, put that one more in the middle of the page. There was a butterfly that I cut out as well so the great thing about napkins is they almost disappear into the background when you do them. You've just got to be a little careful you don't press too hard when you're actually gluing. And it's best to have a bit more glue on your brush than have a dry brush because you can actually tear the napkin. And I think I did put a little tear in that napkin somewhere that you can see. Again, you need to give the napkin a good dry before you move on with the Mod Podge. So just giving it a good dry. So our next step is actually book text fragments. Again, Mod Podge is great because you can see when it dries it goes from a cloudy white um, liquid to a clear liquid which it dries clear. So your PVA glues and things like that do that as well so you can sort of see when it dries. And you can sort of see if you've got big globs of it still in the white rock, sorry, still in the white form. Can't talk tonight. I'm this is only about my fourth voiceover, so I'm getting used to talking while I'm working. So bang, there's my punches. And I filmed this in several segments, so I'm working out how to transition them a bit better than bang, things are there. So the next step, step, what are we up to? Step five was book tech book text fragments. So my punches were still on my desk from my last art journal page so they've got to work out again. So this is a one inch circle and a three quarter inch circle so I'm just punching out the book text and laying them. I'm sorry, yawning again. Note to self, do not do voiceovers at midnight. Um, it's about the only time I've got quiet in my house. Um, oh yeah, it's just after midnight. That's right, no reason to get up tomorrow. And it's very hot here in Australia at the moment, so it's um, ridiculously hot. It's our summer, and still at midnight, it, it's not so bad actually, it's 23 degrees, I'm just looking at my phone while I'm doing this, um, but some nights it's been 33 degrees Celsius still at midnight, which is just ridiculous. So just adding the book text fragments, or the book text circles, down with my Mod Podge again. So just going again, going under them and going over them to seal them as well. This page is basically covered in Mod Podge and it's going to be a problem um, until I seal it with clear shoe polish. So until I seal my pages you can sort of see that I'm using some... Oh that's flipped again, I don't know why that did that a little bit. Okay. So now we've jumped, um, so we've, okay, we've lost a bit of footage. That's okay, we will deal with that, and maybe it's in the wrong order. I'll work that out when I come to it. So step six was sequins, glitter, or mica. So what I actually did was a bit of glitter glue over the top of my circles. And then I've actually jumped to starting my border. So step seven was border, zentangle, or scribble. So I've decided to entangle the border so then it actually fits in with my focal image that I've got planned to do in a few minutes. 
So I'm actually using a pit artist pen. It's a brush pit artist pen um, to go around and do the border. As you can see, my book is turned upside down. It's easier for me when I'm doodling all around the page, um, especially because that page is a little wet still in the middle with the glitter glue on it, on the circles, is to actually turn my book upside down. And I tend to do that when I doodle and draw a lot. I'll turn the book around um, 90 degrees, 180 degrees, or completely upside down like it is now, as it just makes it easier for me to draw. I also find if I'm leaning over my book as well, um, I have I wear glasses and legally can't drive because of my low vision and because of the low vision sometimes it's harder for me to see that far beyond a book and to see what I'm doing so I will always sort of turn my book um, the way I'm doing what I'm doing. Why is that bit doing that with the bit of music? That's weird. Okay. So I decided the black was a bit black now, so I've actually picked up a Sharpie paint pen and actually doing some really tiny lines on the black just to lighten it up a bit because it just felt really contrasty and just looked out of place. So I go back over and do little white lines just to soften the black part of it down. So you can sort of see I've done one page now and the other page and the left hand side page is a lot softer than the other side page which is really nice. So I continue to do my white little lines. This page actually took me possibly quite a while. I think this page took me nearly two or three hours to complete by the time I did everything and I've managed to squish it down into about a 20 minute, 25 minute video. Um, some days I'll spend hours and hours on a journal page and just sit there and get lost in it. Other days I do them really quickly. So the eighth step is actually a focal image which is coming in in a minute. Now this is a focal image I've actually taken out one of my sketchbooks. I'm now onto my fourth sketchbook of pen drawings that I just sit there and do when I'm bored, when I need something to do. So this cute little owl has actually been photocopied out of one of those books. And I've got flip throughs of those on my channel. Um, so if you want to check out some of my pen drawings and I plan in the future to do some drawings on on camera for you as well. So this owl was actually drawn, he was actually sort of copied out of a colouring book. Um, I don't get the whole colouring craze, it does nothing for me to sit there and colour, uh, sit there and colour an image in but I will look at colouring books and one particular one I picked up which was really cool and I've not seen about yet, it's probably three years old now had this cute little owl in it and then I've then tangled the entire owl. Um, so I hope to use a lot more of those sort of drawings out of the, as I've gone into my fourth sketchbook now, um, using a lot of those drawings into my own art, which is really cool. So this is another napkin here. It says keep calm and keep calm and enjoy the sunshine. Again, this napkin is the brownie colour which I thought would match into the background and I went to put it on the layout and the wording would have got lost. So what I'm doing is just gluing it, mod podging it to a scrap of white paper. And I'm having trouble because the words are sort of disappearing. Um, and my idea is to dry it off and then um, outline the words so you can see them a little bit more. So that's what you can do is if um, and then just showing you what the napkin looks like. I um, should have showed you before I stuck it down. But just drawing off my owl and drawing off my um, wording that I'm going to use for the layout and deciding it hasn't been stuck down properly. So here we go, more Mod Podge. Probably wouldn't particularly buy this brand of oh, Mod Podge is the brand, but that particular yellow bottle of it. I think I prefer the blue one, which is not um, not has a has, sorry is matte but doesn't have a shiny shiny um trying to think of that shiny look to it at the end i like my pages to be a bit more matte but sometimes i just take what's on special and if it's at a clearance price and it's not my favorite one i will still buy it because it's better than having nothing if i don't have mod podge you can just use um, pva glue and you just water it down usually one part water two parts glue um, and you can water that down that's basically what mod podge is um, probably got a few more <laughs> a few more chemicals and stuff in it than just watered down PVA glue but yeah you can use that as well and often I do and often Alexis and I use that as well so just drying the serviette from the back to the front 
So I apologise for the next bit. It'll go dark in a minute. And my book will disappear. I'm looking at it and it's not moving. Okay, here we go. Sorry about the darkness. I actually, and there's my head in the way. I had to turn my light off. I usually film with an overhead light lighting up my workspace, but I actually had to turn it off because I couldn't see the letters. So, and I did most of this off camera because I my head's shadowing there and it's just awful. So just showing you a little bit. Using some artist pit pens because we are going over shiny Mod Podge. So just outlining the letters with a fine artist pit pen first. And artist pit pens are permanent. So they will write over shiny surfaces. Yeah, there I'm getting up and turning the light off and working out I can't do this. So look, fantastically finished. So once I outlined the letters, I decided I would then tangle them as well or give them some pattern because they would match in with the owl and match in with the border. So now I'm just going to cut out the words and arrange them on the page and I also colour in the little sun that I'll include that was at the top of the page as well. So I love how the letters match the owl and match the border as well. So this was actually step nine, which is journaling and or a phrase. And then there's only one step to go, um, which I'll show you in a little bit. So I decided to cut the letters up individually because then I could space them better over the page. And I should have, in hindsight, got a heavier glue. Because I glued the napkin to a piece of sketch paper, it was now a heavier thing to stick down. So in hindsight, I should have probably got some glue, um, like some craft glue, but I persisted with the Mod Podge, put basically a big blob underneath and hold the piece down until it grabs. Ideally, I'd love to um, one day get some Liquitex heavy body, heavy body gel medium that's a lot thicker and you can, I see a lot of other YouTubers use it. You can see here I'm pushing like mad to seal the corners down. Um, I'd love to get some liquid Tex heavy body gel for these sort of circumstances, but in Australia it's just ridiculously expensive and out of my budget at the moment. Um, so I'll have to see if if I can find someone special. This year I'm actually trying, 2017, I'm actually trying to use up a lot of older supplies um, before purchasing new ones, um, just because I've got a bunch of stuff that has been sort of forgotten about since I've moved several times in the last moved moved house more times than I would like to in the last few years. Um, joys of renting. Um, and things get packed up and boxes just don't get unpacked. And I'm actually missing a couple of big boxes of washi tape that I haven't seen in two moves, but I've still got probably ten boxes <laughs> that I haven't unpacked, so I've got to do that one day. Um, so finding a lot of things in the boxes and unfortunately glues and things like that if they do get packed up and in storage paints are very okay but sometimes the glues just go off and that's I find that's a waste of money so I'm trying to use up everything and gather everything together this year and do that sort of stuff so just going over the letters really well and I decided to wash my brush put it away start blowing to dry it and then realise my sun is not attached so off it goes nearly blowing off the page so bring the Mod Podge back and stick that on so I enjoy doing the mission inspirations it does challenge me and some months I get really stumped some months I get to the end of the 10 steps and go oh my god what was I thinking I don't really like that but I'm actually enjoying it more and liking my pages more but I use it as if I'm having fun doing the page that's what I focus on than the end result. Some days I like the pages, some days I hate the pages. I actually quite like this page. Um, come together really nicely. Some days the pages don't come together and they just look like a dog's breakfast. But that's that's the whole joy of art journaling. And I will show you some, um, as I record more process videos, I will show you more that look like a dog's breakfast as well. Um, but that's all part of the learning as well and part of the experimenting. I love art journaling, there's no rules. So lastly, step 10 is drip splatters with gold paint. So just showing you there some Kayser Craft gold paint. And again, this paint would be, it has to be 10 years old. My daughter's nine and that paint was bought. I had that when I had a retail shop before she was born. So that would be at least nine, 10 years old. So just giving it an old shake up. Um, watering it down with a little bit of water and then I'm actually gonna put some splatters on. Again, just using that book um, to 
use as a palette and then I'll just wipe the excess paint around the page. Not sure whether you can actually see the gold splatters, but we're just about done. So thank you for watching and staying with me for the whole ooh, 25 minutes. I really enjoy doing Mission Inspiration and can't wait to get my teeth into the 2017 prompts. Thank you for watching. Bye for now.